Hello and welcome back to another one of my fly tying tutorial videos. Um, in this video we're going to be looking at the tying of a, a clink hammer and in particular a foam posted clink hammer that's kind of more geared up for fishing the, the duo method um, or clink and dink. So as I say it obviously has a foam post um, which makes it that slightly bit more buoyant and it also has a, a loop made at the, the back end of the, the fly um, for monofilament which obviously makes it a little bit easier to attach your, your nymph to. So we'll get to it. Um, in the vise, I've got a size 12 medium wire grub hook. Um, thread that I'll be using is my Unithread 8 in black. And we're going to begin by catching in our time thread just behind the eye and taking touching turns rearward. Now, because this is a grub hook um, and it is obviously a, a clean camera, which is technically in a, an emerger not a dry fly um, as it sits in within the surface film we're obviously going to take our thread wraps rearward and we're kind of coming and around that bend so once we're there we can come in with our scissors and take away our, our tag end so as i say we're going to create a, a loop at the rear of the fly um, to attach our our nymph too with our other section of tippet. So this here is some 10 pound monofilament that I use. I'll just shorten that time thread, it'll make it a bit easier to catch it in. Um, give the thread a spin. So what I'll do is I'll catch this in towards myself and obviously with a bit of tension through the thread we'll take our thread wraps rear back down to where we, we took our tag end off. Now, I don't use tippet rings for this fly. If you wish, what you'd do now is you'd obviously slide your tippet ring down there um, and then double it back over. Like I said, I just use the, the monofilament loop. I don't feel that I need the tippet ring. I don't feel that it, it really adds anything to the fly. Um, so I just kind of use the, the monofilament loop that I'm going to create. So we've caught that in with a few turns. And what that allows me to do now is to adjust that that loop okay so i'll pull it through to where i'm roughly happy with it which is right there um and then what i can do is i can carry on taking my thread wraps rear okay to make sure that, that loops where i need it to be and then i'll take my thread wraps forward um obviously securing the rest of that that mono back up the body of the fly i want to get back up to the eye I can come in with a pair of scissors and get rid of that, that waste that I don't need. So for a little bit of added security, what I can then do is come in with a drop of super glue um, and just move that along the, the body with my dubbing needle. Like I say, it just gives you that kind of added, added security. So with the tying thread, I'll work my way back through that super glue, obviously keeping a bit of pressure on the thread. And once I get back to the rear of the fly, I'll then come back through it. And then I'll stop about five to five to ten mil from the eye, which is where I'll add my, my post. And like I say, this is a foam post, um, and it's obviously quite a bright colour of pink. Um, it's a four mil diameter, so it's quite thick, um, and it adds a nice little bit of buoyancy to the fly. So what I'll do is I'll come in, I'll take three turns to secure it. And if I pull that back, I can see where that post's sat. And if I'm happy with it, I can add a few more turns to secure it. What I'll then do with a pair of straight scissors is I'll come in and I'll trim that piece down at the back. And what that allows me to do then is to bring my tying thread through it. Like I say, it will turn, that's not an issue. Um, and that allows me then to taper the body so we have a more natural looking, natural looking body. Now at this point, like I say, it does kind of move all over, so manipulate it back. And then we can come in in front like we would do with a normal clink hammer. Take a few thread wraps, just obviously build up a bit of a dam. And then we'll come around the post with our tying thread. Um, just to make sure that it sits up at a nice 90 degree angle like so. So when it comes to the body of this fly, what I like to do is I like to add a little... Uh, opal mirage tag at the rear 
So all I need to do is take a, a short length and I'll come in and I'll catch that in with my tying thread and I'll obviously bring that down to the, the bottom end of the fly. Bring that tying thread back up out of the way and all I'm going to do is create three to four turns. So there's one, two, three and four. I just skipped a little bit, but it's not too much problem. So I'll then secure that in place with my tying thread before coming in and removing that waste piece. So I'll make sure that's all nicely secured like so. And what I'll then do is I'm going to come in with my dubbing for my body. So for the body on this fly, I like to use the Semperfly Kapok dub. Um, it's black. Like I say, the, the main kind of bonus of using this dubbing, I suppose, is obviously to create a more um, buoyant fly. Um, but I don't actually use the dubbing for that main feature. Um, what you'd normally do is you'd obviously use a split thread, um, and it obviously helps to keep your fly floating a little bit longer. What I do is, while I use this, is I create a nice tight dubbing noodle um, and what that allows me to do is to create a, quite a thin body but also add a segmented body to the fly without having to use any kind of rib through it so I'll add a little bit more um, and like I said I, I'm tying this particular pattern in black if you want you can kind of come in and tighten a whole host of colours. Olive obviously works quite well, um, as does tans. Um, you can obviously tailor it to your to your needs. So once you get to the back of that foam post, which we're at now, I can then look to add my hackle. So the hackle that I use is a budger hackle. Um, so select select my hackle and I'll come in and I'll obviously strip away some of that base fluff like so. I can then neaten up that piece there and look to come and tie it in. So when I tie it in I obviously want to kind of hold it up so we'll take two turns there and with the, the stalk we'll take another two, the stem rather, we'll take another few turns over it before coming back round and obviously securing it against if I can get it against the foam post, like so. Come in again with my scissors and I can trim away that waste. I can get to it. So with the thorax, um, we're gonna use some peacock curl in natural. So I've got three, three strands here um, and I'll neaten up the tips and I'll tie them obviously in a tip way around. So we'll take a few turns just to secure it all before coming in and removing those waste pieces. So once we're happy that we've got all that caught in, we can then start to build our thorax. So what I'll do is I'll take one turn behind the, um, the hackle, and then I'll come in front with a few turns. That's two turns. And then I'll take another turn rearward before catching it in at the eye like so so two turns and a third to secure what I can then do come in and trim away those waste pieces so what I like to do now rather than whip finishing at the eye and then obviously catching back in at the post is my tying thread I'll come back around and then in front of the post like so so now what I'll do is I'll obviously wind on my, my hackle with the hackle pliers um, and I'll hope well I'll look to add three to four turns now with a normal clean camera it doesn't matter obviously it, sorry it does matter rather um, the the turns that you add because obviously that's what's helping with the, the buoyancy uh, obviously with this being a foam post it's it's not too important so we'll take our, our hackle and we'll work our way down 
to a point where we're happy which is there so that's three turns and like i said my thread now is facing me so all i've got to do now is obviously secure that in place so to do that i'll come up and over and then i'll come underneath and then that will be nice and secure i can now come in with my scissors and trim away that piece now most people find this quite tricky now um, when it comes to obviously whip finishing and finishing the fly off what i'll do is to help me out i'll come and i'll trim that foam post down a little bit okay but because we've worked the hackle from top of the post down to the bottom if we try and finish the fly at the bottom it's inevitable that we'll trap quite a few of the fibers so what i then do is once i'm happy with that i'll then come back through and i'll bring the tying thread to the top of the hackle before taking my whip finishing tool and whip finishing towards the top of the fly now by doing this it kind of helps stop trapping the fibers underneath the fly there's a three turn whip draw it in and there you have it the finished fly like i say it's inevitable you will catch a few fibers but it just makes it a little bit easier um in obviously not trapping too many of the fibers so like i say there we have it the, the cling hammer um it's obviously kind of more geared up towards the the duo method um foam post will keep it riding nice and high and then obviously we've got that monofilament tag at the end um with a little pearl miler tag like i say it is tied in black but you can obviously tie it in olive if you want um Obviously, again, you can kind of go down the, the dun colours, the tans and the creams and whatever. So hopefully you've enjoyed that one and you'll get a few tied up in your box. It's quite a, a nice, fun way to spend a few hours on the river. Um, and you'll let me know how they work out for you. So all the best and I'll see you again soon.